This episode is made possible by the generosity of our listeners. Thank you. Welcome to the Creation Science for Kids show. Why is science possible? How come it finally took off 400 years ago in Europe and has been growing like crazy ever since? We romp through the Bible and history as we begin a mini-series on what Proverbs has to say about creation. Give kudos to a ministry and a spiritual grandpa leading people to the truth in the Grand Canyon. Then we learn about a supercharged form of energy, electricity. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is His work, and His righteousness endures forever. He has caused His wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Psalm 111, verses 1-4. through This is episode 66 of the podcast where we learn about Jesus, our Creator, and His amazing world. Hi, I'm Sherry Fields, your host, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Timothy. Hi. And Stephen. Hi. To follow along with what we're looking at, check out the show notes, creationsciencethenumber4kids.com slash electricity. All right, I am going to start going through some of my favorite creation verses outside of Genesis on our weeks when we're not in Genesis. Most of them are found in Proverbs chapter 8, but I wanted to start with Proverbs 3.19. Would you read that for us, please, Timothy? The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. Thank you. What does this short little verse tell us about God as creator? When he went to start the earth, to put it together, build its foundation, get it started, what did he use? Wisdom. Wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is understanding something that you can and cannot do. Mm. That's a good definition, Stephen. How do you use wisdom? What part of you uses wisdom? Your toes? It's using your brain. Yeah, so it's using your ability to think, to understand how things really work. Now, for us as human beings, what I've often used as a working definition is seeing life from God's perspective. But since this is God himself seeing things from his own perspective, of course he's going to do that. But what it's saying is using your ability to think and to understand how things actually work, to do things in a way that will give you the best result. So when God was thinking and planning the earth, he used his mind, his ability to think and understand and plan things out. Now, the second phrase he used understanding As we find all throughout Proverbs and also in the Psalms, Hebrew, their poetry uses synonyms all the time. So understanding is nearly the same as wisdom, and it's even clearer for us. If we understand something, we know what's going on and can even explain it. But again, what part of us uses understanding? Is it our emotions? No. It's our? Mind. It's our mind our thinking. So he used his thinking to found the earth and to establish the heavens. If you have the earth and the heavens, what do you have? The universe. Right. The whole universe. Everything God made, he used his mind to create. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Now, here's where the history comes in. There have been sophisticated cultures where there are enough people working together in a peaceful enough environment that they could have specialized jobs where not everybody was having to raise and grow enough food to keep them alive. They could be more than just hunters and gatherers wandering around just trying to stay alive until next year. They were able to afford to take care of people who only did things 
Like some of them even got to live their whole life just thinking. They would be wise men. Like you run into、um, in Daniel, you run into them a lot because he was one of those men. King Nebuchadnezzar had him working for him just to use his mind because he was so wise. Who else? Long before that. Had had a job where basically he didn't have to do anything; he just was wise, and the king made him very important and took good care of him because he was so wise. Joseph. Joseph, right? He was a wise man, and in fact, that's what the king said about him. Who has understanding like this? Who could do better at helping us take advantage of the seven good years so we can survive the seven bad years? So we have had cultures that could afford to not only give them enough food to eat, but even take very good care of them and hold such people in high honor for thousands of years since nearly the beginning. However, although they would record some things, like the Egyptians were very good at what to do with dead bodies. And even medicine, they were pretty good at a lot. Number of cultures were pretty good at medicine. And what else do we know? The ancients were very good at using their minds to be able to bring into the real world. Think of the oldest wonder of the world. What is it? The Great Pyramid. Right. The pyramids are the examples that have survived. There were numbers of incredible stone structures that we have ruins of from way back when. That's another thing that you use your mind, your ability to work in math, and to understand how can you move such heavy objects. Stone is so incredibly heavy, and yet they could do it. So architecture, medicine, some of those other applied sciences. The ancients were very good at, but do you remember when we were studying about the Greeks? Why did they only get so far in science, and then it kind of stalled out? Do you remember when we talked about the scientific process? What was it the Greeks liked to do, and what wouldn't they do? They like studying. Studying what? Old books? No, science. Sort of. Do you remember, Stephen? They like to. What's the first part of the scientific method? First, you have to. Observe. Right, and then when you see, what do you do with it next? Remember that big word starts with an H. Hypothesize. Hypothesize, which means to say, hmm, I think that happened because of this. But the Greeks would not go any further than that. They would not do the experiments to test does that really work. It wasn't until. Starting in the 1600s in Europe, that we got to where we started doing experiments and testing our hypotheses to see if they worked in the real world. If you recall, why didn't the Romans get into science much? They were great architects, and they were good at building cities with running、um, water and decent sanitation and stuff. But they didn't become great scientists. Do you know why? No, the Romans worshipped gods that could change for no reason from one day to another. They thought the world really was unpredictable. There was no point in studying beyond what you practically needed in your everyday life because they had to acknowledge that if you use medicine last year. On somebody who had these symptoms, if you tried it on a new patient this year, it probably was going to work. If you could build a stone arch this way last year and it would stand up, you probably could build a stone arch the same way this year and it would still work. So in the real world, they had to admit the world did work in a consistent, predictable way. But they thought the gods were not consistent. You couldn't count on them. It wasn't until we had. A stable enough society in Europe that also believed in a god who founded the earth by wisdom and established the heavens by understanding. A god who himself used his mind, used logic, and also was faithful. That the scientific revolution started to explode. There were many scientists like、um, Sir Isaac Newton who accepted God. And perhaps even the Bible, but did not accept Jesus as Lord. But they still understood that the real God who actually created was somebody trustworthy. So if you do an experiment today, it will work again tomorrow, 
and next year, and other people can do it, and we can test and try out new things. And that's what led to the scientific explosion: was understanding things like Proverbs three nineteen. So that's why that's so special. However deep you look into science, you will find wisdom. You will find understanding, and that's a pretty awesome thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now for the middle, I got a newsletter from Canyon Ministries, which they specialize in taking people on tours of the Grand Canyon. Sometimes they'll drive along the rim, and you stay up above and look down. That you can do for a afternoon or a day. They also do rafting trips where you get to go on that white water up and down, and then you get to actually camp down in the canyon and stay. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, yeah. And they fill up really quickly. In fact, they said they have like only a handful of openings for next year, two thousand eighteen, and they're getting ready to open up opportunities to go in two thousand nineteen. That's how busy they are and how many people they're helping. I think one of their most exciting things is they schedule a tour every year for people in ministry. So they take important pastors to show them, hey, you know how every Everyone is bombarding you with millions of years and uniformitarianism. Come, we will show you what is actually in the rocks and how it makes even more sense to trust God at His word, so you can too and show your people. The reason I brought this up is、um, this guy here. So, if you look at the picture, his name is David Losey. I'm imagining he is 78 years old. And he loves visiting the Grand Canyon. What's cool? He helps at his church's youth group, and the young people love him because he's all lighthearted and loves being with them. But he has a good enough business. He has a van business that he runs, so he earns enough extra money. Plus, God never blessed him and his wife with children of their own, so he kind of adopts the church kids. So he will take some of them, pay their way to go to the Grand Canyon every year. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It says he had to have hip surgery last year. Like your grandpa had to, and he said the year before he was hurting so much, and now he can walk. He is so happy. He plans on still going even when he's in his eighties. Is like that is so exciting that this guy wants to help young people. He also helps people go to the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter, and even Israel. Now that is not cheap. It's that's costing upwards of five thousand dollars to get people there, but he cares so much about young people and about creation, and he's taking care of his body. God has blessed him with a good body. He blesses most of us with a good body, and he's taking good care of it so he can still. Go out and experience God's world, even when he's old enough to be a grandpa many times over. So I thought、uh, Mr. David's story was really, really cool, and it's fun to know there are people like that out there who love kids and love creation. And you parents, you、uh, grownups listening, this is an excellent way to impact the next generation and help out. It's one of the reasons we also want to be careful with our money. Is if we choose to not spend it on stuff that's not going to matter, then we'll have extra money to go to places like this. Or as you grow up, if you work hard and develop the skills so that you can get paid more, then you can not only go yourself but help other people to go. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? Yeah. All right. Now it's time to hear from you. What do you have for us today, Timothy? Electricity. What is electricity actually? It's tons of electrons,、mm -hmm. and they're spiking out. Well, not exactly spiking out. What are they doing? What do we call it? Do you remember when they're going through a wire? We call it that the electrons are in a current. Yeah, and what's the verb we use for how a current moves? What do we do for water when it's moving in a current?、Mm -hmm. Flowing. Flowing from the.、Mm -hmm. 
minus to the plus. Right. So whenever you have a contained current of electricity, like in a battery-operated toy, or even from a power station to all our homes in a city and back, it makes a circuit. Circuit has to do with a circle. It's going around all the way back. So while we're on circuits, what do you remember what a short circuit was? A short circuit is where you've got this metal line、mm-hmm. and the place where the power is coming from, and then it goes around and it gets hot. Yeah, why? Do you remember? It said if you have this, it won't short circuit. What was it that you need? A light bulb or something that. Drains the power. Right. When you have as many electrons going back into the battery or the power station as you have flowing out, you end up having a short circuit, and that heats up the wire and can be very dangerous. So, what about、um, wild electricity? Because when we first were starting to learn about electricity, we didn't already have batteries and power stations. What kinds of things did people like Benjamin Franklin study to teach us about electricity? What's the biggest electricity out there? Lightning. Lightning, and lightning is actually a form of what's it called when you touch the doorknob in the winter and get a shock? Static electricity. Right. Okay. So the first thing that we learned about, and then we found ways to harness this power, this electricity, was static electricity. What's happening with static electricity? Do you remember? It's trapped. And once you like walk on a rug and、mm-hmm. you touch something, so what happens to us when we're walking around in the winter and we get electric shocks? As you walk in your wool socks, what happens? It rubs and it loses the、uh, electrons. Right, they move from your socks down into the ground and leaves you with a. Do you remember? If you lose electrons, you have extra. Positive, right? You have a positive charge, and then as long as you touch wood or cloth or things that are an insulator, you're okay. But as soon as you touch something metal or somebody else, what happens to you? You get electric shock, right? Because electrons are actually flowing back into your body. Yeah, that's not very comfortable. Now, another thing you said you haven't actually done this, but if you touch both ends of a battery and your hands are slightly damp, you can feel a bit of the shock as you form a short circuit in there. That's not very comfortable. I I try not to touch the ends of a battery because I've experienced that enough times in my life already. Yeah, so that's static electricity. And what's the biggest form of static electricity so, that Benjamin Franklin he、lightning. studied? Lightning. Lightning is a form of static electricity. Now we're still not sure because it's really hard to get up into a cloud and study how it's working. But at least right now they're thinking that in a storm cloud you actually get molecules being split apart. The atoms are being split, which causes the protons to go one way and the electrons to go another, giving you a whole bunch of charge that then looks for something. Well, actually, most lightning goes sideways through the clouds, but we notice it most when it hits the ground, right, or a tree because it's sticking up from the ground, but it's still connected. Yeah. So then we've learned how to harness electricity and make a circuit. Where do we get most of our power from? Batteries, power plants. Yeah, power plants are the biggest form. When you, whenever you plug something into the wall or your lights built into the house, those are all connected to a giant circuit. Now you looked at how you can have more than one thing on a circuit and have it work, because there is another way of hooking things up where if you have one thing broken. Or the switch turned off. None of it works. What's one place where we sometimes will run into where the whole wire stops working when one part of it isn't working properly? Do you remember?、Um, Christmas lights. Oh, because it's cheaper to make them that way. But if one light bulb goes, you've got to check the whole thing goes out. You don't know which one actually blew, and you've got to. Take each one out one at a time, unless if you don't want to just replace the whole thing right away. Yeah, so that's about the only time we have where the wire has to flow through the first light bulb to the next one to the next for them all to work. Usually, we have where there's a second wire. One goes to 
the light bulb or whatever, and then another one that skips it and goes on to the next. That's the way we normally have it set up. And like a power grid always works that way. So if you turn off the fuse for your house, your neighbors still have electricity that your fuse isn't connected to theirs, right? What happened if it was? Yeah, that would not be a very good thing. We would all be very annoyed with each other whenever we did work. Yeah, working with electricity, you have to be very careful. Yeah. What about, how do we measure electricity? Do you remember what the words are? Voltage. And, um, okay, so you found a really nice video talking about voltage. Do you remember what that is? What's it describing? Was voltage how fast it's flowing? No, how m- much and amps is how fast. Okay, so voltage like, do you remember here in America, what's our voltage? In- 120 mm-hmm. to 240. Well, the 240 is where we've doubled it and have special sockets for our dryers are usually the only thing we use that for. Yeah, over in Europe, they have 220 all the time, and their plugs are massive. They're a lot bigger than ours because they have to handle all that electricity flowing through. And you and they're super deep, so it's really hard. There's no way a kid could get their finger in because you would die. Okay, and then amps. That's how... How fast? How fast it's flowing. Mm -hmm. How many electrons are flowing through per second on amps? No. Was it 264? It was something with 16 zeros. Right. I think it was 264 followed by 16 zeros um, electrons per second. Yep. Yeah. That's crazy fast. And that's an amp. A single amp is not very powerful. That's how much you have for like a flashlight. Many things have a lot more amps than that. So that's a crazy huge number of electrons flowing through every second. Again, if you want to find out more for yourself, they, we found some really nice videos. The voltage and amps is probably the most fun to watch. I thought on the static electricity that we found, it had a really cute picture of a boy. What was he doing? He was going down a slide. Yeah, a plastic slide. So his hair was sticking up. Yeah. And do you remember when you get your hair all coated with electricity or you take off your hat or something and it just frizzes up? It means you have what kind of charge? Positive. Yeah, that you've lost electrons to the slide or your hat or whatever. Yeah, so it was really cute. And all the ones that we have, they speak clearly and slowly so you can understand. The basic introduction is a little older, but I thought it explained things well, which is what you really care about. What did it show for static electricity charge Um, what you can do with it. They had one balloon hanging on a string, and the guy was holding the other balloon, and what happened? Oh, it was pushing away. Right. What did it remind us of? What's it look like? Except you know there's no way it's actually made out of metal. Magnets. Yeah, because actually it's called electromagnetic force. It works in a very similar way to how magnets work, which is really awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Now, one of the things I wanted to mention... Since scientists have learned how to harness electricity, how we can have batteries. And do you remember what are batteries made out of inside? Why do you have to be careful never to throw them in a fire or something? I don't know. They have different chemicals inside of them. So we started developing batteries over 200 years ago. But as scientists, we're working with electricity so we could have batteries and have power plants. And now we're working to have where it's sustainable. We're not using up resources like coal. Do you know what it's done for our lives? What has changed from what it was like for people 100, 150 years ago? What do we use today that they didn't have back then? Cars, airplanes. Mm, um, now, cars, actually, the electric car did not win out, so they switched over to cars mostly run on fossil fuels, on gasoline, petroleum. So in airplanes, the same thing. Their motors, they generate electricity, and they need a bit to get a spark to get the fire going inside of them. But no. What else do we use? Tablets. What do we call them? All those kind of devices we also call... Electronics. Electronics. So everything that you find at an electronics store uses electricity. So yeah, it would be very difficult to have a computer, to have the internet without electricity. It allows us to have these compact machines. All right. And what about um, to make running a home easier? Heat. 
Heat. A lot of us use electric heat. Air conditioners. Air conditioners would be impossible without electricity. Uh huh. Oven. Yeah, electric stoves use it. And what about taking care of our food besides just cooking? Refrigerators. Refrigerators. And what can you use to cook even when you're fairly small? That's not dangerous the way a stove is. Microwaves. Microwaves. And what if you want to have some toast for breakfast? Toasters. Mm-hmm. And then、um, also washers and dryers. And what about at night? Why don't we go to bed as soon as it gets dark or shortly thereafter, like people used to? Because we have electric light. Yeah, we have lamps and light bulbs. So before that, what did people have to use? To heat their homes and to be able to see fireplaces.、Mm-hmm. What would it have been like for children and even grown-ups when you had to have fire pretty much all the time? It'd be very dangerous. Yes, life was far more dangerous. Not only did you have all those germs and diseases to be afraid of, but you also never knew when you'd come home to find your home had. Burnt down. A lot of people, if they could, would have their kitchen in a separate building. So if it burnt, your main house would be safe. But even there, you had to have candles and stuff at night. You never knew when you, your house would burn down in the night. And they didn't have smoke alarms. Smoke alarms use batteries. So our lives are far safer, more comfortable. We live like kings. Compared to people even 150 years ago, because we have learned to use electricity, and it's far safer for children now. Isn't that amazing that God gave us something? A lightning can be terribly dangerous, yet because of electricity, our lives are so much better than people were the rest of history. I'm glad to be alive now. <laughs> yeah, me too. Don't forget, you can find links to all the things we've talked about today by visiting the show notes page, creationscienceandnumber4kids.com/electricity or slash zero six six for episode sixty six. Be sure to let your friends know about the podcast and ministry, and to connect with all the rest of the things we do with the podcast. Stop by the web address I got just for you, C S. Four K S. That's the initials of this show. dot com, and find out how to send us your own recording. Write us an iTunes review. Drop us a note. Become a monthly supporter, and see the heart of why this ministry is so important. Well, this finishes up our show for today. Until next time, have fun treasuring our amazing universe and Creator. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Revelation four eleven.